Well, there it is. After, geez, what has it been now? Like a month already. Finally got this sucker done. <laughs> and it took a bit of frustration and blood, sweat, and tears and all that, but uh, it's done now. So, let me give you a little quick demo. There's the LED power on, 50 kilo ohm ramp up, and then this is the trim, uh, 5K trim pot, and uh, my LED adjuster, which really doesn't do that much in test mode, but when the electrodes are on, it does give you mm, maybe a tenth of a milliamp more, but anyway, uh, so that's the demo. I will turn it off now and uh, then we'll take it apart and uh, give you a tour of the inside in just a minute. Okay, I've uh, removed the screws from the faceplate here, uh, but before we get into the guts of this thing, I'm going to uh, splice in a couple of short clips that I made during the build process. And then uh, I'll come back in just a second and off we go. So I thought I'd throw in a real quick review of the circuit for people who are joining this in the last video here. Here's the battery, here's the switch, and then here is the um, LED circuit. goes through a 2200 ohm resistor which is the voltage divider between the LED circuit and the TDCS circuit. So 2200 ohms and then here's a 20,000 ohm potentiometer and then the light emitting diode and then back to the ground terminal the battery. Okay so the TDCS circuit goes after the switch uh, through a 50k potentiometer, then a 5k potentiometer, and then a 2200 ohm resistor into pin 1 of the LM334 current regulator. And then out of pin 3 of the LM334 you have a 27 ohm resistor, which goes back to pin 2. And so this is the regulating loop for the current regulator. And the output from pin 3 goes down here to the 3 milliamp meter, and then out of the meter into the anode electrode, through your head, to the cathode electrode, and then back to ground. And voila, there you go. That's it. There we go. Well, first of all, this is how your meter arrives in a cute little box like this. And uh, just a quick note, I've, in previous videos I've referred to this as a view meter. That's just uh, because I'm old and I grew up in the 60s and 70s when you had volume unit meters on the fronts uh, of stereos. VU or VIEW. Uh, the proper name for this is a analog panel meter. Uh, so calling it a view meter is just kind of like saying Kleenex instead of facial tissue. Alright, so anyway, one key thing to note about this is along with the cute little box you get this cardboard cutout which has all of the holes, anyway it holds it in place, but that is a very useful tool for marking the holes where you're gonna mount the thing. And one quick note on that is you might be tempted to choose a drill bit that is exactly the same size as the mounting screw. Don't do that. You can do that for one, one of the screws, but for the other three you want to choose a drill bit that's the same size as the hole in the cardboard. And the reason for that is even if you have a drill press it's very hard to get the holes positioned precisely in the right place. So you want to have a little bit of wiggle room to get the thing mounted just right. There's plenty of room on, on this, this hole uh, to, to move it around a little bit if you need to adjust, but just uh, bear that in mind. So, okay, um, 
apologies for the out of focus photo here. It's just camera shake. But you can get the basic idea. I've got the four screw holes drilled and I drilled a, a larger hole to put my uh, keyhole saw through there and I was a bit of a project. It took a good half an hour to gnaw my way around that circle, but you know, it got it done and uh, hey, fits like a charm. And um, the next thing is uh, to lay out the, uh, the knobs and controls, which I did here, but uh, for drawing the lines, what you want to do is get a piece of paper and use rubber cement to stick it to the faceplate. So it's, you know, don't just use scotch tape because that could move around. Use rubber cement, get it all stuck into place. Then you can use your, you know, precision tools to, to measure exactly where you want to put everything. And uh, so here's where the switch goes. And, uh, you know, here's the plug for the phono jack and my three potentiometers, the LED. Okay, and um, there it is, the finished product. I mean, obviously the insides aren't done yet, but this is just the cosmetic outer shell. But uh, it gives you an idea of what it's going to look like, pretty much exactly what it's going to look like in the end. So, all right, on to the next step. All right, not sure if I'll end up using this footage or not, but uh, here I just finished soldering together the main uh, voltage regulator circuit, and I'm going to test it out. And there you go, right at 2.5 milliamps. So that works. And uh, next step is going to be soldering together the rest of the project. I got it pretty much wired up except obviously when I put the uh, that little PC board in there which is actually I used a hacksaw to cut out a corner of one of these little guys because I'm gonna put it right on the post of this of the uh, the mounting screw for the uh, for the meter. So, okay, now let's take this off and see if I can stand it up here so it doesn't at an angle. The light's not too shabby. Okay, so here is, well, um, first of all, about the appearance of this, it's it looks kind of kludgy or you know and the reason for that is I made some mistakes along the way oh boy um, and so for instance I had to replace the switch because I had it wired up wrong the first time and so that meant I had to cut these wires because I didn't have a desoldering tool so I had to cut these wires and then when I put in a new switch of course the wires were too short so I had to splice you know, uh, an extra length on there, and so, and plus, I had some things wired, other things wired wrong, and uh, anyway. So, um, just to run through the basic circuit here, here's the LED. So, uh, I've got power coming in to here, and then out from here to the potentiometer that controls the LED, and then from the middle post. You could go either way. You could go to the middle. I mean, it doesn't matter. Um, anyway, so then from there to the uh, input of the LED, then output comes out here to ground, which goes back out to this connector, which I'll, I'll show you the other end of that in a second. Um, okay, so that's the LED part. The TCDS part goes from here to this potentiometer and then to this potentiometer and then this is the 2200 ohm resistor which goes to pin 1 of the LM334 right here and then this is the 27 ohm resistor which goes from pin 3 the pins of this LM334 are, are kind of 
splayed out under on the underside of this um, uh, PC uh, perf board as you saw in the previous clip and so the you know pin 3 is over here, pin 1 is over here pin 2 is in the middle so this 27 ohm resistor goes from pin 3 to pin 2 and then pin 3 is the output and here's another bodge I made uh, because originally I forgot completely about wiring through the the meter I had this thing going straight into the uh, electrodes which this is the input for the electrodes so then I had to splice a length onto there to put the meter in circuit so now the meter from the output of the meter goes to the electrode input and then the output of the electrodes this is the the ground um, segment of the uh, audio jack that goes back to ground and this goes back to the battery okay um, now what I don't think I mentioned about this piece of wood before this is actually just a piece of uh, I had a scrap of mahogany um, um, wall paneling and I just cut cut a piece of that and the reason for that is to space put a, a space between the uh, potentiometer and the aluminum and that is to allow for the uh, oh geez well there's a little I guess you call it a pin sticking out from the face of the potentiometers here there's a little thing sticking up and the reason for that is that will keep the the thing in place to keep it from turning when you turn the knob so this piece of wood allows room for that and also allows you to, to dig into the wood a little groove for, for that thing to stick into so I just use an exacto knife to cut those holes and um, yeah so that takes care of that issue I mean, that that's pretty much it um, and it works and uh, the other thing is um, here's the uh, the bottom my little battery holder is just stuck in place with some of this um, you know double-sided sticky stuff I don't know there's probably a name for this stuff but whatever um, and then of course the connector allows me to to separate the two pieces completely so it's easier to, to work on and uh, there you go that's about it I also just wanted to show you my um, uh, soldering iron that I bought I I spent about twenty five dollars for this thing and uh, to show you the, the features the reason why I bought this particular one um, let me turn it on real quick okay you can see the display uh, well okay it's it says 50 degrees C, 130, 140. All right, so it's warming up, and it warms up pretty quick. But here's the thing. This thing has six settings. I'll see if I can flip through them real quick here. So if I want to set it at, say, 400 C, I click this thing. Okay, so uh, it's set at 400 but um, what happens is every time you click the button it'll flash the target setting briefly for like half a second but then it reverts back to showing you the current temperature so now it's continuing to warm up it's at 250 um, it's gonna there's 260 alright and so you know there's 270 um, so it allows you to choose the precise uh, temperature you want, and you can get, uh, you know, you can spend a hundred or two hundred bucks on a soldering station that'll have a whole, you know, its own standalone power supply and all that fancy stuff. Um, but you know, for twenty-five bucks, you can get pretty close to the same functionality. So I just wanted to show you that real quick, and then of course you. Uh, if you click it, the I think the seventh click will turn it off. 
so there it's off now. So just wanted to let you know about that. Don't skimp on your soldering iron. Get something decent. So that's pretty much the end of the build process. Um, as you might notice, I've already made a couple of changes to the electrode cable, but this video is already a bit long in the tooth, so I'm going to save that for uh, the, the next one. Um, and I also wanted to sort of give you guys a look at what what the um, what the how the device performs in actual use as opposed to in demonstration mode with you know with the electrodes just shorted across because uh, it is a little bit different and um, also I might even uh, give you a little tour of uh, the electronic shop here in Taipei where I bought most of this stuff but uh, like I say, this this video is already a bit long on the tooth, so I'm going to end it for now and um, leave the rest of that for another video. So good luck, everybody, and uh, see you next time.